Hey, hi, this is Olivier, and you're watching the Internet of Things show. Today, we'll talk about coding for devices on Visual Studio. And we have Mark with us today. Hey, Mark, how are you? Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, too. Mark, tell us a bit about what you're doing at Microsoft. I think it's a good introduction yeah, to sure. the topic. Uh, well, I work on the C++ team for Visual Studio. Uh, I work on the Linux support in Visual Studio targeting C++. As part of that, because you know, when you're targeting Linux with uh, C++, you're using GCC. So okay. what we've done recently is we've taken our GCC support in Visual Studio and extended that to include being able to target ARM devices. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, which should make sense, because actually mm -hmm. devices out there mostly are things that are running on ARM yes. CPUs and microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. And all these big like PC type things. Right, right. Yeah. So we've been able to target for a long time devices like the Raspberry Pi, the BeagleBone. But okay. Really, those are you know they're single board computers. I mean they're running Linux. They're yeah, okay. bigger, you know, beefier machines. But the smaller ARM devices, they can't run a full operating system, right? So like this kind of thing. Yes, right? like the like the little ARM embed device. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, what I find like super like surprising and magical is like I can then use Visual Studio on yes. my machine here mm -hmm. and yes. write the code. Mm -hmm. Compile for yes. a specific platform, cross compile yes. basically. Yes, exactly. Uh, do we have also some debugging capabilities at some point? We do have debugging capabilities, and in fact, 15.6 Preview 2 actually introduced the debug capabilities for ARM. Like F9, F10, F5, F5, F5 F10. yeah, uh -huh, yeah. Ooh, mm -hmm. okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love that. I like that already. Mm -hmm. so, well, show us a bit about yeah. the experience, right? Sure. What does it take to get there? So, in order to get it installed, this is the Visual Studio installer here. Um, and I've already got it installed, but if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see this option here for Linux development with C++. Okay. It's under this option. There's a optional component here for embedded and IoT development. Okay. So you just click, th click that, click install, and that gives you the capabilities that you need for targeting the ARM devices. Got it. So um, what does that mean? Does that mean bring some compilers? It some bring, yes, this will actually give you the ARM GCC compilers installed okay. as part of your Visual Studio instance mm -hmm. so that we can, and it will also bring down Make so that you can build your ARM projects with Make files. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Got so it. Nice. that's what that brings down. And it also brings in the debugging capabilities. Okay. Um, now, the thing about, and I, I'm sure you know that with targeting these little devices, there's a million of these devices out there. I mean, yep. this, is, this is a nuclear device. Okay. Um, it's embed. One of the nice things about this is that when you plug this guy in, um, it sets up very easily to the machine. Okay. It just shows up as a, as a D drive uh, or as mass, USB mass storage. Okay. Um, well, that's the capability that uh, the board exposes. This is right? this specific okay. board has that capability. Okay. So it shows up on your on your machine as a as mass storage. Okay. When you compile your binary, you just copy it there. The board resets and runs it. Right. So easy. It's yeah. a nice, easy one to get started with. But in order to get started coding for one of these guys, you have to set up a make file or you have to set up you know a project of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, figure out what all your compiler command switches are. Yeah. And so what we've been focused on in Visual Studio is we've been Enabling the core capabilities in VS, uh, Vis Visual Studio C++ now has a open folder concept where you just go to a, navigate to a folder mm -hmm. that has your source code in it. You open okay. the folder, and then you can start editing your files. You IntelliSense lights up, um, like you do in VS Code, right? So yeah, it's very similar, okay. very similar experience to VS Code, but within Visual Studio. Got it. Um, so with uh, so we we're using that experience for the microcontrollers as opposed to building a whole Visual Studio project system for it because that lets you bring your existing code mm. into Visual Studio and get started with it. Nice. But that does give me a problem in terms of showing somebody how to get started because now there's no easy wizard or anything. Mm. Uh, but mm -hmm. we can show you something similar to how that would work. Uh, so ARM has an online compiler for their uh, for their devices. So okay. you could come up here. And this is the embed one, right? This is the okay. embed one. And okay. so this is at os.embed.com. Okay. And you can see here are some boards I've registered that I have. Okay. Um, and you can add a platform here so you can keep track of the ARM boards that you have. In this case, I've, the board I brought with me today is this Nucleo board, okay. uh, the 411. So I've got that platform selected. Okay. And then what I can do is I can say new, and then I can ch pick a template. And so okay. we can say pick a, pick a blinky test, right? Um, a typical a typical right. typical embed any any embedded programming you get started make sure your yes. environment works blink the LED yeah. then move on to something more complicated yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> and useful um, and useful yes but it need but your but first check you is that. if I can if I can do that then yeah. I'm going to be good and so now we've got a project in the ARM online compiler and we can build up here but okay. I want to work locally okay and so just to get started what I can do 
is I can export my program. And so this will bring up an option of different targets that the ARM compiler has uh, to export to. Okay. You notice they actually support VS Code here. Oh. So I have two options that will work in Visual Studio. I uh -huh. could either export to GCC ARM. Okay. That will just give me a make file and uh, in a zip, you know, configured to work with the ARM GCC compilers. Okay. Or I could target VS Code. So that's something that your team worked with the ARM folks to enable in there? Or? ARM enabled this on their own. Uh, ARM actually likes VS Code, so some of the guys okay. there you know, use VS Code themselves, and so they self-enabled for this. They've got a blog post I can give you a link to that they, okay. that they talked about this. Okay, we can um, definitely share that link yeah. in the description. Now, here. so I'll go ahead and export to that target, um, and that'll give me a zip file. Okay. And so if we go and just check out what we've got there, we go into the downloads, and then we have, we just basically get a little Nucleo Blink folder. Okay. So I've already exported this into my into my file system. Okay. Um, so you always can see it's ready. here. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, always <laughs> be ready. Um, and so then I can come over into Visual Studio, and this is the, the and folder. And just open the folder, right? And just open the folder. Let's go ahead and close this and show folks that. So yeah, so you can just go in Visual Studio now. You can go to File, Open Folder. Okay. And then you can navigate down to where you want and pick the pick the folder you want to open. Okay. And then that opens that up, and that's basically all there is to that. Awesome. Um, yeah. Does it so? Does it need any specific files there? Could, like if it I does. use F5 now, mm -hmm. right? What well, it's, gonna it's not going to work to start with with okay. F5. You do have to configure things. So okay. by default, Visual Studio will. Uh, configure a folder like this for IntelliSense thinking that it's a Windows project. Okay. Uh, it's not so smart that it will automatically determine That's a fair what your assumption code is. Though, right? Yeah, because you're on Windows, yeah, you know, yeah, it yeah. seems like Windows code. But Visual Studio has uh, a CPP properties.json. Mm -hmm. And so for your folder view, you can configure this. Let's see if we can get this larger here. Um, there's the zoom. So there's a configuration file that uh, you can find under project, edit settings, and cppproperties.json. Okay. And this is an edited version. This isn't what you get out of here by default, but uh, by default you'll see multiple configurations for x86 and x64 debug and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. But we have a, the environment here for GCC ARM. So okay. when you specify inherit environment GCC ARM, mm -hmm. this is now going to configure Visual Studio to use GCC IntelliSense. Okay. It's going to tell us to look under the folder for embed, for our includes. It will also set a path to where GCC is installed for Visual Studio okay. and set like the sysroots for GCC so you get the proper IntelliSense for your ARM programming. Got it. Okay. Um, and so you can see when we come over here into the main.cpp, you can come here, you can right click, you can do things like peak definition, uh -huh. and you can actually see now without <laughs> having to hunt around through a bunch of includes and stuff, you can actually see what you have like available a to you. Real right. powerful IDE yes. for doing code mm -hmm. development. Yes, exactly. Like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so that's what that looks like. And then in order to build, we have we actually have makefile support here. Okay. And so you can see that triggered off of the makefile in the context menu when I right click, I actually have a build task. Okay. And so I can clean. I already had it built, so we'll clean yeah, yeah. we'll clean my output clean directory. Everything and build. And one thing before we go too far, let's go ahead and edit this. You can see similar to VS Code, we have uh, we have basic um, like tag completion and things for file formats that we recognize. Mm -hmm. Basically, the te text mate formatting. Mm -hmm. So we have that for make file here now as well. Okay. And one of the things I wanted to show you um, was in the make files that get exported from the ARM embed compiler. One of the things you want you're going to want to add is dash g. So for the commands for uh, C and for C++, basically these are what gets emitted at, as part of the make file mm -hmm. to compile your stuff. Okay. It makes sense that you're not emitting debug information by default when you're building things for a microcontroller because it makes the, the targets larger and you're normally trying to optimize for size. Okay. But if you want to debug, you're going to have to emit the debug flag. So okay. if, you ex if you follow this advice and you go in and export a project from ARM's compiler to try, mm -hmm. You'll want to come in here and add the dash g flag to these commands. You got it. But okay. so Makes sense. that's good advice. And now we can go ahead and build this. It compiles for this board. Yes, it's going to compile for. Uh, yes, exactly. Yeah, cool. 
So we're using an ARM compiler that was installed as mm -hmm. part of Visual Studio and Make that's installed as part of Visual Studio yeah. to build our... I, I wanted to ask mm -hmm. you, so um, which version of Visual Studio supports that? Uh, this is Visual Studio 2017. Okay. Uh, I think we added the support for ARM cross-compilation in 15.5, which is the current RTW version. Okay. okay. That version does not have the support for debugging, though, yet. Okay. There are ways that you can configure oh. it by hand, but... If you want a nicer experience to yeah. debug, it's 15.6 uh, Preview 2, the current preview of okay. Visual Studio. Okay. And this is community and up, so you don't need enterprise or anything like that. So you, you can, can use, go for free. You can go to the free version, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. I like that. And so we can now see that I have the output, I've got a bin file, I've got my elf, you know, and so now I'll show you how we can actually. There is another new thing in Visual Studio called configure tasks. Uh -huh. And so if I right click this bin file, like how do I flash my board now, right? So if I go to Configure Tasks, this added a new task here. This is by default what you get in Visual Studio when you configure okay. a task. Um, and so now you're able to configure what you want to be able to do mm -hmm. in the context menu off of this file. Okay. So you can see I've created one here before. It's called that Flash. I, na I created this name. I mm -hmm. just named it Flash. And it applies to this file. Okay. And this is actually what this env comspec does. It gives a, a command prompt to Visual Studio to use. Okay. And then so what I'm saying in the command prompt that I've launched is basically copy my output to the D drive. Awesome. Yeah, because as we're right. saying, that one exposes the yeah. flash as a uh, drive for Windows. Exactly. Okay. And so what that means now is that I can do this from Visual Studio without having to leave and yeah, you know go, go find, open my folder, drag a file around. I can actually you know, do that from here. It's super powerful. Like Oops. That. That is not what I meant to do. Not what you wanted to do. No. <laughs> so let's uh, right click on that guy. And well, it you feels can see like now here's. When you start mm -hmm. editing binaries like that, right? Right, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit, but yeah. yeah. Um, and now I can click Flash, and it says one file copied. Okay. And, and the little board, no, did a little dance a, there. And that's a little it's blinky LED that is blinking. Yes. Blink. And so that's all there is to that for that one. But you can imagine, you, you know, there's a lot of boards out there. Yes. And how you flash these boards is always different. So with something like the, the task configuration, it mm -hmm. lets you be able to specify whatever the tool is that you need to use in order to get the file onto the device. And, and I guess we can imagine the way the way ARM mm -hmm. team actually created an export to mm -hmm. format compatible with the Visual Studio tooling mm -hmm. that other manufacturers and right. so on will actually equip their toolings to export for Visual Studio, right? Because hopefully creating an IDE yeah. is not simple. Right. right. We know mm -hmm. how to do that. Right. And now we are more and more helping these teams actually Right. Like, as we workflow. as we try and open Visual Studio up to more things because it's only fairly recently in twenty seventeen that we just added the capability to start targeting Linux and to understand G C C IntelliSense and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, by things like open folder yeah. and supporting CMake and Make within Visual Studio, these are things that start making it uh, a more open environment and more yeah. customizable because you're not locked into just the mm -hmm. project systems that you know we provide out of the box. It's highly customizable. Yep. It's all text-based configuration. I love that. And so if we come over here, then I can next show you how you can actually configure this to debug. Okay. So when we right-click on this, there's debug and launch settings. Uh -huh. And what this brings up is you, these are all of the different debug and launch settings that we have available for uh, our open folder scenarios. Okay. Um, so in our open folder scenarios, it's very similar to Visual Studio Code that you need to uh, create a launch.json file mm -hmm. and then specify the options. What these commands here do is they give you a template of okay. for various conf targeted configurations because mm -hmm. it, they're always different depending on what you're trying to do. Makes sense. So you can see we've got attach for Linux, we've got MinGW, and then here we've got debug microcontroller with GDB server. Okay. And so I already have that set up. And one thing that's interesting is there's this is the open folder view, but there's one file folder that it hides, which is this .vs. So there's this mm -hmm. button over here, show to all show files. The, uh, hidden ones? Okay. Yeah, to show the uh, hidden ones. So like that. here we can see the file that I set up before, the tasks.vs.json. Oh, no, I'm sorry, not tasks.vs.json. Launch.vs.json. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> and this, is, this is one that is, is based off of the, that configuration for GDB server. Mm -hmm. um, and so you can see here that specified the project is off of that binary file. Okay. The program I'm going to load is the ELF. Okay. Um, and then, now, right now, we're in preview. You need to specify the full path to where the MI debugger is. Okay. Uh, the MI debugger meaning the machine interface. 
So uh, we do install the ARM GDB XE, okay. but we got, got some bugs in our preview. So the environment variable we're using for that path doesn't expand, so I need to give the full path to okay. where it is. It's, okay. it's installed as part of okay. Visual Studio, though. Well, that's fine. That's preview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so then you can see that this, there's some setup commands to start debugging. Uh, basically, we change to that directory. We load our symbols. Uh -huh. um, now, there's some other magic down here, though. Um, the configuration I'm using here, I'm using OpenOCD. Uh, OpenOCD is a uh, open source uh, debug server for mm -hmm. microcontrollers. Mm -hmm. You can think of this as uh, something similar to uh, Sager, right? Mm -hmm. Except without any hardware. It's just the software piece. When you buy a Sager right. probe, you get the software that runs on mm -hmm. your PC that talks to the probe, that talks okay. to the microcontroller, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and OpenOCD is just an open source version uh, or an open source tool that understands how to talk to the microcontroller hardware debugger okay. and presents a GDB server interface for debuggers to talk to. Okay. And so what this configuration here is doing is I've installed OpenOCD, so I mm -hmm. give it a path to where OpenOCD is. Okay. And then I give it a path to where the configuration for my particular board is. Okay. And now I have some text that I ran this command manually to make sure that it worked. Mm -hmm. And when it is actually connected to the board, for this board, that's what it says. So I give that text here so that Visual Studio knows, OK, everything's hooked up, and it's running now. OK. And then normally, uh, this debugger shows up on this port. So okay. we've got that all so specified. So basically connect the uh, Visual Studio environment mm -hmm. to that debugger. Yes. So it can then have the interaction mm -hmm. with, the, uh, with the ID. Right. And in this particular board, What's interesting on the ST Nucleo boards is this hardware here mm -hmm. is actually not just the USB host, but it's also an ST Link debugger. Mm. Um, so it's mm. not part of the actual board, it's a separate board. Uh, these are really cheap boards, they're really cool. But what's interesting is you can even snap this part off and use it as a debugger for a, a different for target. For a different, right? for, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. and then but so that's why I don't yeah, I don't need sense. like a Sager probe for this particular board. If I was using something else, I might. It, but this Whatever. one has the debug hardware on I'm it. I'm telling you, man, it's a different world, isn't it? Like, no yeah. more JTAGs and I, things like that. Uh, no, you, you still need JTAG sometimes. You still need you still need JTAG. Well, so we're getting in a totally different environment for mm -hmm. for embedded developers here. It's pretty right. Cool. It's pretty neat. Okay. And so now what I can do is I can go ahead and and hit my hit my F5. And there we are. We're in debug mode. And now I can go ahead and set a breakpoint. And look at that. And now the board is not blinking. And the debugger is telling continue, me, hey, I'm talking here. Yeah, this yeah, is the debugger. So you debugger. saw the, the light blink. There it goes again as we run through. Nice. And so now we can actually expand, and we can start looking at our variables. I mean, there's not much in a blink program, but you can expand this. You can start you know, so stepping through yeah. your code. And the other things that you'd expect to work in Visual Studio, like under the debug menu, under Windows, you've got disassembly. So you can actually look at the disassembly and all of the normal things that you'd expect. That's 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 interesting because actually it's not just for people who are used to do development for Windows, whatever, on Visual mm -hmm. Studio, to 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 be able to develop for devices. Right. It's also mm -hmm. the other way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like you are a developer on these kind of hardware. Mm -hmm. Now you can actually leverage a development environment yes. that also includes capabilities for other things because you're not yes, any longer exactly. just on that thing. Exactly. Right? And it's not uncommon for me to run into people in the embedded world who you know, prefer Visual Studio for their development. Uh -huh. They'll actually build the logic uh, for you know, C code is highly portable. And this is usually C code, what people are working mm -hmm. with here. So they'll build their business logic in a C code that they compile and run on Windows for faster iteration using Visual Studio for debug and stuff. And then they do this last mile integration to an embedded you know, yep. sort of cycle. Yep. Uh, but they lose all the fidelity of Visual Studio. Now yep. they won't have to. Now they can actually do everything awesome. in Visual Studio. That's awesome. Yeah. Cool. That's, that's really a great tool. I love that. So thanks a lot, Mark. Mark, yeah. that, was, that was a great introduction. I'm sure we'll hear more about you and Visual Studio yeah. for IoT development. Next time, I'll bring a board with network connectivity. Oh, like wireless debugging? Maybe wireless. <laughs> awesome. All Thank right. You very much. Cool. Thanks.